We borrow money from banks because we believe the bank has the money and we don't. What if what we were taught was not the whole truth? How would that affect your mortgage, your loan or credit card? You're talking about things which aren't the problem. The problem that we have is a flawed banking system, a fractional reserve banking system where bankers can lend money that they don't have. And if you go back in time to the United States in the 1850s, that was a capital offence. You could hang for that. Hang on a minute. Banks lending money they don't even have? How does that work? In an International Monetary Fund working paper, we find the following. Under the present system, banks do not have to wait for depositors to appear and make funds available before they can on-lend. This fact can be verified in the description of the money creation system in many central bank statements. Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago states, What they do when they make loans is to accept promissory notes in exchange for credits to the borrower's transaction accounts. The Bank of England's quarterly bulletin of 2008 states, Banks extend credit by creating money. The Federal Reserve Bank of New York publication, I Bet You Thought, states, Commercial banks create checkbook money whenever they grant a loan, simply by adding new deposit dollars to accounts on their books in exchange for a borrower's IOU. The Federal Reserve Bank of Dallas's publication, Money and Banking, states, Banks actually create money when they lend it. So the Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago, New York and Dallas, plus the Bank of England, all create money when they lend it. Former attorney of the Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland states, Banks deposit promissory notes with the intent of treating them like deposits of cash. If banks deposit your promissory note as cash, for the ledger to balance, the same value must be paid out. If the sum paid out is the loan drawdown, the ledger is balanced. So who owned the money that funded the loan drawdown? The Federal Reserve Bank of New York, the IMF and at least four others, state your promissory note was the source. If your bank does this, why are you forced to repay them, month after month, year after year? If your bank is not doing what those major banks do, your bank should be able to produce documentation of prior title, ownership and rights to the money they purportedly loaned you. And remember, the IMF working paper states, it is obvious to anybody who has ever lent money and created the resulting book entries. So, Commissioner, you talk about banks' ability to withdraw, withstand shocks. Well, by this definition, by your definition of shock, is people turning up wanting their money back. So the question is, did you borrow money that was earned over the course of years and years of hard work? Or did you borrow your own promise deposited as cash that was created in milliseconds? Put another way, did they loan money they had in the bank before you walked in the door? Or did they loan money they created after you walked in the door? What we've actually had here is criminal activity by bankers and not a single banker has been sent to prison. This is extraordinary. Billions of pounds have been um, taken away from taxpayers, taken away from depositors, bondholders, and yet not a single banker is in jail. This is a disgrace. This is a disgrace. We really have to use the law of the land, not so much regulation and printing money, and central banks are equally culpable, make no mistake. I'd like to see some central bankers in prison. And I call quantitative easing counterfeiting. Printing money is counterfeit. It's illegal if a private citizen did it, they would go to jail. So let's look into our own hearts, the very unpleasant arrangements that politicians, bureaucrats and central bankers have between themselves at the expense of the taxpayer. Let's end it and let's end it now.